Hello once again friends. Last video I showed you how to use the Max 3102 pulse oximeter module and breakout board along with an ESP32 microcontroller to measure blood oxygen saturation. What I didn't do was include a heart rate measurement. The reason for that is I couldn't find any code examples that actually worked. So I figured we should just look at the problem and do some of our own engineering. First, you'll recall that a pulse oximeter exploits the fact that blood transmits or absorbs red and infrared light frequencies to varying degrees depending on how oxygenated the blood is. So we can shine red and infrared light at or through the surface of the skin and then measure uh, how much of, uh, of the light is transmitted or reflected using a light sensor like a photodiode. But we can also exploit another observation of the reflected light to measure heart rate. This graph illustrates the samples taken for refracted uh, red light from our setup using the MAX 3102 breakout board. I recorded 256 samples while pressing my fig finger against the sensor. First, know that there is a, a rather large uh, offset or DC signal that is sort of obfuscating what we really want to see. Let's look at it with the uh, vertical axis uh, not starting at zero and adjust the scale and you'll see an obvious pulsation in the waveform. This is my heartbeat and the frequency of those pulses corresponds to my heart rate at the time of the measurement. So how do we use these samples to automatically measure heart rate? You might think of writing some code that scans the values and searches for waveform peaks and troughs and measure the time between all of them to compute an average heart rate. That's certainly possible, but probably a little trickier than you'd think. Look at those small pulses that are sort of part of the larger pulses. They form local maxima and minima that might be difficult to distinguish from the main ones. And certainly you can't rely on using threshold values to determine pulse peaks and minimums, as you can see how the levels vary uh, quite a bit, even in this small window sample. If you've ever studied signals and systems, you might recognize this as something perfectly suited to Fourier analysis. In a nutshell, we can transform a time domain signal into the frequency domain. If we apply a Fourier, uh, a Fourier um, transform to this waveform, we get a result that shows us the spectral content of the signal. Now, in this plot, I've removed the DC or uh, zero frequency component because it's not relevant to a heart rate for a living person. I already uh, determined that the sampling rate of the sensor we're using is 50 samples per second. For a 256 point discrete Fourier analysis, it means uh, each bin corresponds to a multiple of about 0.2 Hertz or 0.2 beats per second. We find the dominant frequency at an index of seven, which corresponds to a frequency of 1.37 Hertz, which we multiply by 60 to get beats per minute. Uh, it turns out to be a heart rate of 82 beats per minute. And I can confirm that was in fact the correct heart rate at the time of measurement. So using Fourier analysis really seems to be a no brainer here in my opinion. Let's see about applying that on the ESP32. Going to the Arduino IDE, what we'll do is make sure we have installed the Arduino FFT library that I'm highlighting here. As with many Arduino libraries, the documentation isn't exactly exhaustive, but there are a number of examples available if you follow the uh, link to the associated uh, GitHub library, and you can uh, find some information if you do a search. With this library, we can perform a fast Fourier transform, which is an optimized discrete Fourier transform that we must use a, a power of two samples. I'll quickly run through the code just to highlight a few things before uh, we, we run it. But remember, I will share the code listing used here through a link in the video description. You will also want to reference my previous video for more background about the MAX 3102 pulse oximeter sensor. Okay, so we include uh, libraries for the MAX 3102 itself and for the FFT. We have an array to store um, the sensor samples. Here I call it red array, and it has uh, pulse samples uh, number of entries, uh, which is defined as 256, of course. Um, also note, uh, I define our sample frequency as 
50 up here. So we'll jump to the main loop uh, where we have a uh, while loop which waits on the next available sensor reading from the max 3102. Once a reading is ready, we collect the red and um, infrared uh, samples. Now we only end up using the red value anyway, but this um, along with some other code is a leftover from the oxygen uh, saturation measurement code from the last video. So now we take um, the samples one by one and um, populate the, the 256 entry array. Once we've collected a multiple of 256 samples, we uh, have an if statement uh, in which we pass along the samples to the FFT function. The code snippet is adapted from uh, a code example. Um, and in the end, we use uh, the library function to find the major peak of the transformed samples. That is, we find the dominant frequency. And finally, we re uh, convert the frequency to beats per minute uh, value and uh, print the result to serial output. Let's have a look at ESP32, MAX3102, and the compiled and uploaded code in action. I've got the code running on the ESP32, which is connected to the MAX3102 breakout board using only four wires, which I describe in the code listing. I've got the output from the board being sent to the serial monitor in Arduino IDE. What I'm doing here is holding my index finger on the sensor, kind of feeling like, like uh, ET there, and I've got a reference pulse oximeter that displays oxygen saturation and heart rate on another finger to use for comparison. Once my finger position settles in and things stabilize, the heart rate measurement from the ESP32, as shown in the serial monitor text, starts looking good and matches quite closely um, the, the reference device. I've tested this for a while and it does seem to work quite reliably. That's all for now. Until next time, keep tinkering.